Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and on today's episode, we are gonna be kicking off a brand new build here on Classic Mini DIY, one that I have been wanting to do for a number of years, and it's finally time to make it a reality. So, you won't wanna miss it, stay tuned for that. As I said, on today's episode, we are kicking off the newest project on Classic Mini DIY. This has been something that I've wanted to do since I first saw it, I don't know, maybe five, four or five years ago, and that is a 16 valve cross flow cylinder head conversion. Now, before we get started, I do want to take just a minute and do a bit of a shameless plug and share with you guys that I have a brand new lineup of merch on my Classic Mini DIY store. Now, alongside all of the performance parts that you've come to know from Classic Mini DIY, I have just launched a brand new merch lineup called the Camp and Cooper Collection. As many of you guys know, I am a huge camping fan. I love getting outdoors, I love mountain biking, and really anything that has to do with the great outdoors. And of course, I have a love for classic minis. And so I thought it would be really cool to partner with the gentleman, Jerry, who owns the white 1100 A-series engine that I just got done building. He owns that car, did a whole product lineup for me, and those are now available on the store. They should be or have been popping up on the screen. If you wanna help support this brand new build that we're about to kick off, as well as any other projects on Classic Mini DIY, this is a great way to do it. Head over to the link in my description, store.classicminidiy.com. So with that out of the way, I do want to share with you guys the next big project on Classic Mini DIY. And that is a cylinder head conversion but not just any cylinder head conversion. We are going to be taking a BMW motorbike engine with 16 wonderful valves on the bottom of this head, and we are gonna be retrofitting it to a brand new A-plus engine block. Now this conversion is not something new. It is something that's been around for a number of years. A few companies have done this over the years, CAD, Kent Auto Developments, Specialist Components, but this twist is going to be with a brand new kit. I am partnering with Ben over at Bag Sport Fabrications, and he is helping me get set up with a brand new kit that he's gonna be carrying on his store so that I can make a turbo A-series engine using a BMW K1200 RS cylinder head, which you see behind me here. It's gonna be drive by wire. Like I said, it's gonna be turbocharged and it is going to be a blast of an engine to drive. Now in today's episode, I wanna show you guys a few things, namely the cylinder head, a few 3D prints of the parts that we're gonna be using once they get CNC'd and made up, and we're gonna do a few modifications to the head to get started. Now jump over here to the bench and I'm gonna show you guys just what makes the cylinder head so special and why people have been slapping these on A-series engines for the last decade. All right, the Crossflow BMW motorbike head. As you guys can see, it looks a little bit different than an A-series five port head would in that it has holes on the back here as well as holes on the front. Now the idea here is that this is a fully crossflow cylinder head, meaning air goes in one side and out the other side. Just by the virtue of this being a crossflow head and it having 16 valves allowing air in and out of its cylinders, it flows almost 40 to 50% better than a stock five port head would. And that is considerable because the more air you can get into your cylinders, the more fuel you can mix with that, the more combustion you can get out of that and thus more power. That's an oversimplification, but that's the general idea of having more flow on your engines. Now, many people take these BMW cylinder heads and there are quite a few of them. There's eight valve versions and then these 16 valve versions. They come with different cams. There's a number of different variations, but these have become extremely popular 
especially with people who want a really, really high torque and high punch 1275. You can put four carburetors on the front here. You can do four individual throttle bodies and do a really, really nice fuel injection setup. And this is going to give you, you know, easily in the 150 to 160 horsepower range, just by virtue of being cross flow and building up the engine the right way. Now, one interesting thing about these cylinder heads is that they are very, very close to being bolt on to an A-series block. In terms of dimensions, they're almost the same size. What's crazy is that this cylinder head, even with both cams in it, and as you can see, a much larger footprint, easily weighs half what the five port steel head does, which is really cool by itself. But there are a number of supporting mods that you have to do in order to put this on an A-series block. And we'll get into those once we get into this project. Now, before we take the top off here, I wanna show you guys the bottom. This is the piece that is so special. You can see here, each chamber has four valves. That's two intake, two exhaust, and they are staggered, which means that they are interference style valves. So there is some you know, consideration when you get into the pistons. But these chambers, surprisingly, line up almost perfectly to an A-series block. The stud pattern, though, is slightly different. So, I'm gonna flip this back over. And now, let's take the top off, and I wanna show you guys the absolute beauty that is a dual overhead cam cylinder head. All right, so now we're looking at what makes this cylinder head so special. And that is two individual cams controlling the intake side and the exhaust side, meaning you have fine tooth direct control of individual valves on each part of the engine stroke. Now, one other thing that you might notice or you might have not noticed is where the spark plugs are. Those sit right down in the center of this cylinder head, which makes them really easy to service, but you can also conceal them and make it really clean and tidy. For our build, we're gonna be doing something called coil on plug, which means that the ignition coil actually sits on each individual plug, instead of having a separate coil pack or ignition coil like the old distributor setups did. Now next up, I wanna do a few modifications to the cylinder head, which I have actually already done here, but I did film those, and I'm gonna jump over to the past, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what we did to remove a few extras off the front of the cylinder head to make it really tidy, as well as to prepare for some of the extra items that I have behind here. Once we take those off, we'll jump back over, and I'm gonna start showing you some of the ancillaries that Ben has started working on for the 16 valve setup. All right, so did a little bit of grinding here. You can see I got most of the big unit for mounting off here. Um, in this kit that is coming from Bag Sport, you don't actually need any of the mounts that are on the front here. So I went ahead and shaved down the uh, injector rail mounts. There was a small stub mount right here, and then just continued to file this down. Now. You wanna be extra careful if you're doing this on your head because the pocket right here, it is kind of easy to blow through that. And I do think there is still more material I can take off. Um, however, I didn't wanna do this with a big angle grinder. 
I don't currently have a Dremel head that's going to be good for this, but I'm going to come back through, um, probably not in a video, but I'll come back through and trim this down, trim down the edges, clean up this a little bit, and really just make things look a little bit more finished. I am kind of tempted to take off this uh, stamping here. I don't think there's any real value of keeping that on there either. Um, but I uh, thought it turned out pretty all right for the initial pass on it, the rough draft, if you will. Um, I only had one tiny little nick um, where my flap disc jumped while I was working over here, and I hit this inlet manifold. And I think it's still going to seal okay, but that'll remain to be seen. I'm definitely going to have to test that, and if it doesn't work out, um, either we'll add a little bit of material with a TIG welder or, um, you know, some, maybe a bigger gasket will allow me to seal that properly. So a little whoopsie there, but that's all right. All right, so I went ahead and whizzed the tops off of the cam retainers here and we pull this camshaft out and you can see what I'm talking about and why this is so special. The camshaft actually rests directly on the uh, top hats are these little covers for your valves. So in a traditional classic mini, you have a set of rockers that would sit across the top of the cylinder head, and you have actual push rods that are pushing up and down and moving that rocker back and forth and opening and closing the valve. This is what's called a push rod engine, and it works just fine. You know, there's nothing too wild and crazy about it, and it's a pretty traditional way to run an older engine. Now, a number of modern engines, most in fact, put their camshafts on top of the cylinder head, and this allows the lobes of the camshaft to rest directly on or interface directly with the tops of the valves. So you have no mechanical difference between the camshaft that sits in the engine and what's happening on the top end of your cylinder head. So if we take one of these off, you can see this looks mysteriously like one of the cup retainers that would sit on a camshaft um, with the push rod in top if you are familiar with the A-series setup. But let's get a closer look at this here. And now you can actually see here, this is the top of the valve, that is the valve stem, and then you have your spring and the retainer all built right inside there. And so each of these covers covers a valve, with the retainer and the spring all integrated into one piece. Now this is what makes this whole setup so special. And with the ability to have two camshafts, it means that you have independent control over your exhaust and your intake valves, which is how you can get such a immense amount of flow and performance out of these cylinder heads in just their stock configuration. It's what makes them so special. All right, with that out of the way, I'm gonna go through and clean these covers. I'm gonna put the cams back in for right now so that they don't get damaged. And I wanna show you some of the 3D printed parts so you can get an idea of what this might look like after it goes onto an A-series block. So with those early modifications out of the way, now it's time to show you guys a little bit of what this might look like once we start getting it built out. And I wanna stress, these are all 3D printed parts and prototypes for what we might be putting on this car as we get deeper into the build. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is take off these gears that are on our camshafts because these are actually not gonna get used in the conversion. These get converted to a belt drive system. So you have two pulleys and a number of pulleys and tensioners and belts all the way down this side of the engine. And I'm gonna be showing and superimposing some engine picks here so you guys can get a good idea of what other 16 valve engines look like. Now, I did 3D print the covers or an approximate version of the covers that will be going on this car at some point or this cylinder head, but these, I wanna stress, are mock-ups. They're not something that is a final product, hence it being a 3D print. And as you can guess, with these 3D prints, I couldn't actually print the entire cover in one go because, well, my printer isn't big enough. So. That'll be a future uh, upgrade at some point. All right, so this is where things kind of start to get pretty cool. Now, this is a custom cover that's gonna be CNC'd by Ben over at Bagsport. And one of the reasons he does this is so that the cylinder head can fit under your standard classic mini hood or bonnet. The original setup or the original cylinder head cover is much taller 
And so this is a much lower profile version. This one is the one without the coil unplug brackets. So as you can see down there, direct access to the spark plugs. But for the kit that does support coil unplug, there would be retainers right down this middle bit here so that the plugs can get retained and held in place much easier. So now we're looking at what will ultimately become the front side of the engine. This is the side that is going to face the radiator in the Classic Mini. And this is where it'll interface with the water pump pulley, um, the crank pulley, and the camshaft pulley. This right here is a little sampling of the plate that would get used in order to accommodate all of those new tensioners and pulleys. Pretty cool little setup here. This is definitely a work in progress. But then we're also presented with a water pump blank because in this setup, or most people who do these 16 valve setups, the water pump actually gets deleted and gets converted to an electric water pump, which then also means an electric fan is introduced instead of the mechanical one. But there are little stub connections here to allow you to orient your water pump blank whatever direction you want it to be. But the cool thing here is, as I said before, we took the two gears off of the camshafts and that's because they're gonna get pulleys. So this gets enclosed, which means this is an oil tight cover. And then you have two pulleys right here that will have a belt drive moving all the way around here. And right down here, you would have an oil drain. Now, there is a lot of machine work to both the cylinder head and the block that has to take place in order for both of these to work. But that's a little sampling of what it might look like. So I do suspect that this has introduced a number of questions about what I'm gonna be using this engine for, what I'm gonna be using the cylinder head for, will it go in Bad Wolf, what is the plan? And in truth, right now, I don't have much of a big plan for it. I've always wanted to build one of these engines and it's just something that is finally presented itself as an opportunity for me to do. So this will be a totally standalone build on the channel. I'm gonna build up this engine. I'm gonna set it all up. I'm gonna get the plenum made from Bag Sport. I'm going to build out the entire bottom end myself with some custom pistons from Ben as well. Build out the gearbox. And then once it's all finished and put together, then we can kind of decide what it's gonna be used for, whether it actually goes in Bad Wolf or something else. I also had a bit of a consideration that I might do a little raffle or a giveaway for the engine out of Bad Wolf, but I'm not sure if there's enough people who'd be interested in that. If that's something that you think would be cool and that you might buy a raffle ticket for, let me know. There's a lot that goes into hosting a raffle of that size, especially with the logistics of a total engine giveaway. So we'll see about that. But I am extremely excited to share this with you guys. It's gonna be a really cool build. I just can't get over how special this is gonna be once it's all put together. It's gonna run amazingly well. It's gonna be able to get perfect fueling across all four cylinders. We're gonna be able to pump it full of a lot of boost and we're not gonna to have too many issues, hopefully. But as we get farther in the build, I am gonna share every step of the way with you guys. I'm gonna show you all of the things that you have to do to the cylinder head, all the things that you have to do to the engine block. This is gonna be a really fun learning experience for all of us, and I can't wait to bring you guys along with me. So anyways, that's it for today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed it, short and sweet. And until I see you on the next one, you know the drill. Enjoy those minis and motor on. See you guys.